QuickBooks Online 2023. Class tracking versus projects versus location tracking versus tags versus sub-customers, which used to be called jobs, differences, and similarities. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. We're gonna duplicate some tabs to put the reports in, major two reports, that is, the balance sheet and the income statement, otherwise known as the P&L, profit and loss. Right-click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right-click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. So we're gonna have our two reports up top and then work on the left tab. This is my normal practice. I'm gonna to go to the reports on the left-hand side in the middle tab, open up the balance sheet as it's thinking, tab to the right, reports on the left, this time the profit and loss report otherwise known as the income statement closing the hamburger we're going to work in the future now i'm going to say 2026 from the future of the recording point here 010126 to 123126 and run it and then tab to the middle nothing's in there yet tab to the middle and do the same thing 010126123126 and run it and close the hamburger so last time we more or less went through all the different options uh, that we have available for sorting our data in chronological order now we want to spend a little bit more time thinking about the similarities and the differences between these options so we turned on most of the options the class tracking the location tracking and the projects and the tags uh, and the sub customers so now we can look at some of the, the differences between the two of them. Now, the main thing that, the, between all of them, there's more than two. <laughs> but the main thing uh, is usually you're thinking income statement, which is the performance report and giving that added dimension to the income statement. Although some of these tools have a similar option on the balance sheet, at least with some of the accounts to break the balance sheet out uh, by these items. So let's go ahead and enter some data into the system for each of these and do a little bit of some comparing and some contrasting. So the first one was the sub customer. So I went into the sales tab and we've got our sub customer here. Now, oftentimes what you would do is enter expenses into the system and possibly pull them over as billable items to this sub customer. To do that, let's turn on our billable setting and to do that, we go to the cog up top. We're gonna to go to the accounting and setting left-hand side. We're in the expenses on the left, and then we wanna open up the bills and expenses. And I'm gonna turn this off. We've got make expenses and items billable. So we've got this turned on. I think it's on by default in the newer, but it used to be something you had to turn on, but I think they basic. And then I'm gonna track the billable expenses and items as income. Uh, in a single account. I want that to be chosen as well. And that looks good. So I'm going to save it. I'm going to say OK. And then let's make an expense. I'm going to make an expense purchasing something we will imagine for that particular job. I'm going to put it then to the sub customer here. And we'll say, OK, this is going to be then then on let's 26 010126 and i'm just going to tap through here and i'm going to add something that we purchased so let's say we purchased then i'm just going to add supplies so we're going to say we purchased supplies i'm just going to expense it as we purchase it expensed supplies okay it's in the advertising 
but that's okay. I'll keep it. I'll keep it there. And I'll put it into other business expense. Okay. So we'll say there it is. And then let's that's let's say that's for a thousand dollars. So then I could make it billable, which means I'm going to pull this over to an invoice for the particular customer, or in this case, job. The job's going to be the uh, sub customer. And then I'm not going to assign a class to it because right now I'm just thinking in terms of the sub customer. So if I record that, this is going to decrease the checking account. The other side's going to be going into the supplies expense account. And then it's also going to be something that can pull into an invoice. So I'm going to say, okay, if I go into my balance sheet and run it, now we've got the, the checking account went down is in a negative field right now, tabbing to the right and run it. And we've got our uh, income statement, which now has supplies. Now over here, I can break this out now by going to the break out and I say, I want to see it by customer and run it. Now I've got customer number one and then this job, which was related to that customer and then the total is linked in there and then my total income statement. Note, I can do a similar thing on the balance sheet with the customers. I can I can go to the customers and run it this way, uh, but the balance sheet gets a little bit a little bit messy when you start to break it out, but you have some functionality with the customers to break out uh, that way. And with some of the other tools like tags, uh, you may not be able to do it, you know, break it out in such a way uh, for that. If I go back to the tab to the right, and I say, I want to invoice a customer now. And I'm going to say it's going to be customer number one, sub customer. Now I can pull in that, that billable item to the invoice. Now there's a couple ways to do this in a job cost system. I'm just showing kind of the functionality here. You might want to use items and whatnot to pull it in. But I'm going to then say that it pulls in the 1000. And let's just keep it at that. I'll just say save and close. And I think that'll pull into its own income statement account because I didn't use the items. So if I run to the to the income statement and run it, now we've got this billable uh, expense, which is now in the income. And then the supplies expense, which nets out to a zero on uh, the net income and on the balance sheet accounts receivable. Uh, is going to be impacted. There's accounts receivable broken out by customer. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat. Now note that if you were to use the sub customers, you have kind of a, a similar thing, except with the sub customers. Now you've got, I mean, sorry, with the projects, you have a similar thing as the sub customers. So here are our projects. I'm going to make new projects. So let's say we just have a new project we're going to make. I'm going to say new project. So now I'm going to say that this is going to be, uh, let's say, let's say project. Let's just say project uh, one again, 1.0. 1 let's say customer is going to be now I can assign it to customer one again, or I can assign it to the sub customer. So although the project is now work where we're going to be tracking all the stuff and it has its own area over here in the projects it's still kind of like a sub customer because it's usually gonna it's gonna have to be attached to a customer although it could be attached to a sub customer so that's where there's a lot of overlap the projects kind of taking over the the sub customers but you could still use sub customers in alignment in conjunction with the projects so i'm going to assign it to project uh, customer number one it's going to be in progress for the status of the progress of the project, which is another useful field to, you know, to be able to sort in. And then it opens up the project. So now it took me into the project field. So here's the project. I'm in the actual project and it gives me an income statement in its own kind of area. So the projects are kind of neat because I can do a similar thing for the projects, but I can open the items actually within the project here. So I could say, uh, within the project, let's say that I'm going to say that we want a drop down and I can add the expense form from within the project and do a similar type of thing. And this is going to be going to, let's say a vendor for an expense. This is going to be O2, uh, O226, let's say, 
and then this is once again let's say supplies but this time for 2000 it's going to be a billable item but this time it's going to be pulling in to the project as opposed to pulling into the sub customer so similar functionality here project number one we're not going to be using the classes and i'll say save and close and so now if i go back on over to the balance sheet and run it i could still run this report by a uh, customer and now it's showing the sub customer and it's showing the project so i could do the same thing and so so i could do the same thing over here on the if i refresh that so there we have that it's doing this it should do the same thing over here uh notice the project is is not being broken out uh in the same regard with some of the balance sheet accounts so the balance sheet is a, gets a little bit wonky when you go from some of these different options. If I go to the income statement and I go down to the projects, I want to break this out. Now I can't break it out by project again. I break it out by customer this way. And then again, it breaks out the project. So that's a little, so this, this is means the projects, you can kind of group the projects and the sub customers as similar to each other for these different things. So then the, and then the classes, location tracking and tags as kind of similar. So you might wanna take these, these things and break them further down in those two subgroups. Sub customers and projects are similar because they're kind of tied to the customer. Tags, classes, and location tracking are similar because they're not necessarily tied to a customer. But you also have other reports. If I was to duplicate this, on the projects over and above what you have on the sub customers you have if i go to the reports on the left and say we're going to say projects we've got the project summary report which if i go from 010126 1231 is similar to to kind of like an income statement report but it gives you this kind of quick rundown of the numbers down below. Let's go ahead and, and say we we're going to get income on the project like we did last time. So if I say we're going to say invoice the project, now I'm going to invoice for the project. It's pulling in that 2000 just like we saw with the sub customer, similar kind of thing there. And then down below similar similar thing is happening here. We might have a markup that I might add. Let's call it add a new item which is going to be a service item let's call it a markup of it's going to go to to this one let's say income account and so let's say we mark it up 500 so 2000 we marked it up 500 so we should have income 2500 so we have some net income save and close so now within the project you've got this nice little income statement income costs if I go into the balance sheet, I can break it out by customer still. I can't break it out by project, you'll note here, but I can break it out by customer, which sometimes breaks out the project here, but it's not perfect on the balance sheet accounts. Primarily, these tools work best on the income statement, and then they sometimes on the balance sheet have some balance sheet functionality. You notice the sub customer still pulled out the checking account here whereas the project that 2000 got assigned over here so that's kind of an interesting difference but if i go to the to the income statement then it runs it by project so now i've got the amount we build in two separate accounts there's our income minus the expenses broken out by that particular project there's the net income if i look at it in terms of uh, the project summary We've got our project summary here, and I have the added reports within the project field. So if I go within the project field over here, then I've got my transactions uh, here. I've got my, this is the last, I can't see them because I'm in the future. So I could say all dates apply. So there's our transactions, my time activity. If, and so for tracking time, project reports we've got the profitability reports and then we can add time cost by employees and unbilled items the, the items that we build for that haven't been billed yet 
And so if I do my project summary report here, we get a nice report, but it's only for one particular project. So it's kind of nice to see this other report that's going to give you all your projects in one place, which you can do with breaking out by customers. Although that can get quite cumbersome if you have customers that aren't assigned a project, because then you're going to have this long report with a bunch of customers, or you can break it out with this project profitability summary, but it's a lot more limited limited in, in what it has here. It just has total income and costs and the net profit doesn't break out the categories of income and cost. Now let's go to the classes. So if I go to the classes, I, I have the classes turned on. That's by going to the, to the cog up top, accounting and uh, settings. And then within the categories, I've turned on both the class tracking and the location tracking. So this is going to give us a similar breakout. So if I, if I save that and close this, let's look at these same transactions. So I'm going to drill down onto these transactions, click in here, and then I'm going to drill down onto that 1000. And then I'm going to add a class to it. So let's just say, I'm just going to make up a generic class and just say it's going to be class number one. So this is different than the sub customer. This is different than project number one. This is now a class which is being assigned by this field over here. It's going to the sub customer which is being assigned by this field. So we can look at the differences between the two. I could save and close that one. Let's go to the other one, this transaction, and give it a class. So I'm going to assign the class down here. I'm going to say this is going to be class uh, number one. And so let's say, okay, save and close. And then if I go back to my reports and run the reports. So now on the balance sheet, I've got it broken out now by customer, which gives us our line items by customer. I can also then hit the drop down and break it out by classes, which breaks it out up top by class. Now the, the problem on the balance sheet is some of the accounts might not break out by classes, like uh, the, the checking account, if you're doing a line item by line item, isn't breaking out uh, by class because primarily the income statement accounts are the ones we typically think of. Although uh, if you break out some other accounts, like a current liability account or something like that, you, you do have some functionality with the classes being broke out on uh, on the balance sheet on some, you know, some of the transactions. So you have some of it being broke out, which can be useful in some scenarios. And if you have uh, if you have software that's higher level up from Pro Plus, you might have more balance sheet uh, balance sheet capabilities. But mainly with all of these, we're thinking income statement. So on the income statement, we ran it by customers. So you can see it up top those other sub customers and the sub customers and projects give you this sub customer summary, but that can have problems because then you can, if you have a whole bunch of customers that, and you don't want all of them to have a separate column, then, then classes could be the way to go. Because if I sort them by classes, then I'm not going to have all of those customers in the way I could just have the class assigned. So that obviously is quite useful. You know, if you're trying to assign by location or by department or something and break out the columns and you don't want like a million different columns of a, of a customers, that's a lot of customers, but you know, you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm not. Any case, so now it breaks out. Uh, it's breaking out this way. Let's, let's go back into this transaction and add a class to it as well. So let's say this was class number one and say boom and go into here and just to make it different let's say this was let's say this was class number two just so we could say two classes and say this was class number two save and close and did it not assign that one Let's go back to our report. CK Paso. All right, so now we've got it broken out by classes. And I just broke part of that transaction between the two kind of randomly. 
uh, so it doesn't line up exactly to what we did with the sub customers, but you can do it the same way. You can see how you can use classes as a job cost kind of thing and basically assign your classes as jobs, which can be kind of nice to su in some ways because then you, you're not running the report and, sh and showing all the all the customers and sub customers that don't have, you know, it's just going to show the classes and then the total and that total on the right side is quite useful as well because it's taking your entire income statement subcategory line item and breaking it out to a class. And if there's not a class assigned to it, it'll give you that non-applied area, which allows you to drill back into it and assign it to a class uh, if you need to. Now the location tracking is similar to the class tracking, but it doesn't give you that option to break it out line by line. So let's add that one. Let's go back to the first tab and we saw the location tracking is in the same area to turn it on and so let's just add a location let's go into this one again i'm going to drill down and now add a location to the same transaction so we'll go into it and say let's say now we have location one or let's just say it's like california is one location you don't have to use it for locations by the way but note that it's up here and not assigned to the to each line item so i can't go down here and change like this location of this line item to a different location the location is for the full transaction which is going to include however many line items there are so if i save and close that and we go okay and then let's do the second one and let's say this one is location i'm going to say nevada nevada so now this entire transaction is going to the second location of Nevada and it's going to a class one. So I'm going to say save and close. And then if I go back on over to the balance sheet, I can run this. And so now it's broken out by class. Let's hit the drop down and say, I want to see it by locations. And so now I've got uh, California and Nevada. So notice it is breaking out the balance sheet account. And I think that's because it's assigned to the full transaction. Whereas when I assigned it to each of those line items, then it only picked up the line item activities. In other words, the checking account wasn't a line item I can assign by line item, right? But still most of these are kind of focused in on the, on the income statement, but some of them break out some of the balance sheet accounts, which again can be useful it's not perfect on the balance sheet you're going to find you're going to run into some kind of confusing things but having some of the items broke out on the balance sheet is nice if i go to the income statement and i want to see it not by class but by location i can now have this breakout by location here are these two that are broken out i can do the same and notice the non-specified items are useful because that allows me just like with the class tracking to go into it and then to change it and make and then assign it to a location california let's say for this one and this one we're going to say uh nevada so we'll say nevada on this one boom save and close and then back and so now if i run it now we've got hold on a sec 0101 to six, 12, 31, two, six, running it. Okay, there we have it. So now we've got these two applied out. So similar functionality, it's a little bit easier to do the data input if you're saying that you want everything assigned uh, per transaction, but you don't have as much flexibility uh, that way. So just note the difference between th those two, uh, the, the, the class tracking allows you to break out line by line, which makes it easier or makes it more flexible. Because if I go in here and I assign a class line by line, I might have one expense account, for example, that I'm then going to be assigning to multiple different classes. So I can use one transaction that applies to multiple different classes. I could turn that feature off on class tracking so that every transaction is assigned just one one class per transaction similar to the location tracking that's what's happening with the location tracking up here 
Now note, if you wanted to do that and make it easier, you still might want to use the class tracking sometimes because the class tracking has more flexibility on the payroll if you're processing payroll sometimes to assign a certain payroll item a class, whereas for some reason the location tracking uh, seems to be more limited in that regard. All right, finally we have the tags. So the tags, if I go back up top and just, uh, well, let's add a tag to a transaction. If I go into these transactions and add a tag to it, let's say we're gonna go in here and say uh, sales rep or something like that. And typically you, you kind of want to make your tags. Let's actually go into the tags up top. You kind of want to make your tags up top and then say, let's go to my tags because they're designed to be in groups. So you could say, let's go to my tags. In the accounting view, it's also under banking and then the tags up top. And then you're going to say, okay, let's say we, have, we want a new, let's say tag group. And let's say we have sales reps, California, and then I assign a color to it or whatever. We'll get into this more later. And then I'm going to say, I want to add another, let's, let's say, well, then you can add your reps within it. Rep one, add, and then rep two, add. And then I'm going to close this out and I'm going to say new tag group. I'm going to say sales sales reps Nevada, make that a different color, save it, and then sales rep three and sales rep four, for example. So now you've got your tags that are grouped out kind of in this fashion. So then we can assign our tags to transactions. So if I go back into my my profit and loss here and i go to my primarily my income statement accounts you would think with the sales reps i'm going to say we have sales i've got uh nevada where are my tags managed tags hold on a second okay i had to refresh my screen there's my sales rep all right, so we're gonna assign that one. I could assign multiple tags too. So that's another one of the benefits. It wouldn't, in this case, it doesn't really make sense to assign two tags, but if I had multiple tags, maybe they work together <laughs> on the sale from, from two different areas. I could say, save and close this transaction to dit, and then, okay. And let's go back into my balance sheet. It's gonna go to my reports and say this was the profit and loss I, I should say from 010126 to uh 123126 and let's do the other one i was in here and i assigned tags did i assign tags to this one let's say this one was over here okay so now if I go back into my income statement and run it, notice I don't have my dropdown by tag or there, sometimes it shows up and sometimes it doesn't. I, but there it is right there. We got the sales rep. So you've got the ungrouped tags, ungrouped tags, and then the sales rep, which I know is breaking out by that tag. And then I've got the sales reps, California. Now note what the tags don't do is they, they don't give you like the full income statement side by side on the income statement, which is, which is kind of nice, but they give you that, that snippet of the, of the profit and loss per tag, uh, which is nice. If I go to the, to the, to the balance sheet, let's open up the balance sheet reports. You don't have as much flexibility on the balance sheet. The tags are kind of on the income statement. So if I go from 010126 to 123126 and run this, and then if I hit the drop down, notice I don't have my tags at all on the balance sheet. So you don't have that balance sheet breakout. So so there's that. Now if I go to the to the first tab, 
and I go into my tags area, which I usually go to by the cog and then the tags. It's also in the banking section and the tags. You've got a quick overview uh, up top. Now note that this is this year. So if I say all dates, all dates and uh, update it, see if I can refresh it. Well, it's not pulling in all dates for my transactions up top, but usually if I'm in the same year, it gives you a nice little visual up top, but then down below, you've got your tagged information. And sometimes the filtering options are a little bit different if you open up from the reports within the tags. So if you're using tags and you want to sort by tags, you might not want to go to the profit and loss and then filter by the tags, but actually go into this tags area itself. And then I can run the reports for the sales reps here, sales rep here by group or by each you know individual sales rep. So if I go up here and say, uh, run the report, then we've got our, our report. Let's make this from 010126 to 123126, where our data is at. And so there's our, our income statement. And then if I hit the drop down here, once again, we've got our sorting data, sales rep California, uh, sales rep Nevada. If I go into the sales rep California, then you, you would expect you might have filtering options over here. So if I filter then this tags, another thing that sometimes doesn't show up in the filtering options when you run the normal income statement and I can filter by tags, say sales rep one, for example, and further filter down like that. Okay. So that's the general, the general idea. So to, to recap the overview of this thing, all of these tools basically allow you to give another dimension to the, to the financial statements, primarily focusing in on the profit and loss, the performance type of reports. So, so if I go into the performance reports, giving us multiple categories is generally what happens. Some of these options have more capacity on the balance sheet, which includes the, the class tracking to some degree and the location tracking and might have more capacity on the balance sheet. If you were leveling up from pro plus to uh, a level up from uh, pro plus the tags are have so on the profit and loss notice that most of these give you the option to see all of your categories broken out and the total for the time frame you're covering which is nice to run a report like that because then you can tie all your subcategories into the total but the tags generally do not uh, do that so that's a so you want to keep kind of that in mind and when you run these items up top by customer, which is typically done with projects or sub customers, then it gets kind of convoluted because you're going to have a bunch of customers, even if you don't want to be including those customers, whereas the classes and location tracking will show up here. Uh, you can also possibly filter by the classes by most of these options too. So if I hit the filter and drop down, I can run a report and then filter by class. I can filter by location. Notice the tags are a little bit more finicky to filter with. You have to actually go to the tags reports to filter by the tags. So that's kind of a, a strange thing with the tags. Uh, uh, and then, no, so one of the main differences in terms of cost is that the, the projects, the location tracking and the classes are in pro plus and above. If you go below that and you want to use some of this, some of this capability, then you might still be able to utilize the sub customers and the tags. Although QuickBooks sometimes even limits the kind of reports that you can generate with them. <laughs> so, but I think you still have the capacity to run those, uh, on, on the lower versions. Um, and when you try to group these together in your mind, I would again think of sub customers and projects as doing a similar kind of thing. And then the locations and the classes being quite similar with then the tags being more similar to the locations and the classes than to the sub customers and the projects. Another key difference is going to be that the classes allow you to do some processing of the payroll. So if I go to the, to the cog up top, 
and we if we if we had our payroll turned on which i turned on over here we'll talk about later but if you go into the payroll settings then you've got this option for your accounting transactions down here and you've got your your class tracking option so here's your class tracking functionality uh, and you can assign like employees the class now that's good uh, and you only have it you don't have that on the location tracking which is kind of strange to me because you would think obviously if you had a full location you would want to be assigning the location to it so sometimes the class tracking has more flexibility than the location tracking we'll talk about maybe some workarounds on that uh, in future presentations however even that is somewhat limited because sometimes if you're if you're assigning jobs or something like that you would like to assign the the payroll you know by what they were doing not so much by the employee so you have to assign by employee now the job the projects has has its own kind of flexibility with the payroll as well so if you go into the projects then you can actually assign the payroll to the projects however to do that properly you have to be entering weekly timesheets so that usually works quite well if your employee that you're assigning is working uh hourly work and you're assigning your so then you're assigning the cost to the project based on that if you have a salaried employee then you run into a similar problem with payroll and obviously payroll is something that could be done internally or externally so we might dive into the payroll thing in a future presentation so those are some of the big differences so now that we have kind of covered some of those big differences we could ask the question that we might dive into is like okay well, well given that when might we use you know one tool versus another tool